Welcome everyone to MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. A big night on MLB Network. We bring you exclusive coverage of Game 2 of this National League Division Series, the San Francisco Giants against the Chicago Cubs. Are we looking at the loosest, coolest, best team in the sport of baseball? I don't know if we're looking at the loosest. I'm going to say the coolest and the best team. I'll agree with that. Why can't they be the loosest? They were a nail biter last night. Johnny Cueto was fabulous, Kevin Millar. Yes, and they're the youngest and the most powerful nasty club. No, but the, with this guy as their manager, they have to be the loosest. Walking around with his little cup of Joe. Joe. Uh, there, there's a method to that. I get madness. it. I get it. Little cup of Joe. Walking <laughs> around, mingling. All the media, they kind of just like wink at him. They all love Joe Madden. How do you, have you ever been around Joe Madden? I mean, you, this is one of those guys that you just love, right? You gravitate to him. He's cool. He's mellow. He drives a van. He drinks red wine. He's just one of them cats, and you believe what he says. Yeah. You, you know what's amazing? A couple of years ago, when you were watching the Rays, and they would have these themed road trips, like pajamas night or yeah. sweatshirt yeah. night. And I would look at that and go, man, I don't know if I would do that if I was a player. But then You? The, you? Yes. You'd wear and, antlers on TV. Right. You'd wear I'm, what I'm a panda hat on TV. What as a what, player, he said, when he was on right, 104 for the Brewers. Right. Now, but, but, but I will say this. Having a chance the last two years, you and I going to Arizona, <laughs> the 30 teams in 30 days, I'm buying in. That is the only camp the last two years where I left there in 2015 thinking, I want to play again. Yeah. That's the uh, because the mojo is there. It's young. It's vibrant. They're buying in. The music's blaring. They're getting their work done. It's the perfect storm. They get the right guy in Joe Madden for this organization. It seems like just yesterday when you were making panda noises for the San Francisco Giants and Pablo Sandoval. Oh, and now I was. you're buying yeah. in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, and now you're buying in for the Chicago oh. Cubs. You fair weather and Little Danny. <laughs> hey, let's show you what happened in game one of this series. Giants, Cubs, Anthony Rizzo. He's got a little uh, infielder's glove. On his on his right hand and that pickoff play is beautiful design play right there. Javi Baez cuts back into first base. Terrific throw by David Ross to the fourth two outs for Brandon Crawford Lester getting this little innocent little ground ball. Lester did weave in and out of trouble Kevin Moore. Yeah but you know what he also did he also hit his spots when he keeps the ball down. The man has that swag on him for playoff time. Well this right? guy's got swagger Kev. Oh my. Oh Javi boy. Baez. Oh boy. No need to run to first base because this is way <laughs> in the basket. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, if that hits the wall, there's problemos. But you know, wind was blowing in. It felt like it was going to Waveland. It looked like it was going to Waveland. <laughs> and Javi knew it. You always watch the hitter. The hitter will tell you. And you know what? He told us he was circling the pillows. Uh, yeah, I knew it the whole time. Yeah. Uh, and then we stared at the baseball in the basket for like the rest of the night. Uh, Aroldis Chapman in for the save. Hernandez. He really didn't go. Well, this is one of those. We go, hey, do we just want him to check, right? Well, they did check. Did he go? Yeah, I don't think no, so. The Cubs no, the Cubs catch a break. After a Buster Posey double that looked like it was a homer, but the wind was howling last night. Baez makes the play, fired up. Cubs take game one by a score of one nothing. Both starting pitchers were amazing. As for tonight. Game you'll see here on MLB Network. Jeff Samarja, a 12 game winner in year one of a five year, $90 million contract with the San Francisco Giants. He faces the team that drafted him, developed him, broke him into the big leagues, the Chicago Cubs. Kyle Hendricks, what a story this year. 16 and 8 with a 2.13 ERA, best in baseball, and a Wrigley Field, Dan, he's even better. ERA like a hair over 1.3. He doesn't throw hard. What is the magic of Kyle Hendricks? You know, in spring training, pitching coach Chris Basio, who I was a teammate for seven years with the Milwaukee Brewers, came up to me, said, watch this guy throw. He's Greg Maddox light. He goes, Dan, I'm telling you, a lot of similarities to Greg Maddox, right? You watch this guy, and as you touched on, what about this quote from Greg Maddox? I look at the way he pitches off his fastball, kind of like I did, and you look for guys who pitch the way you did. For me, it was Hershiser and even Mike Morgan. Hendricks has a little movement and it sinks. It's not a four seamer that's straight and it doesn't cut much from Greg Maddox. Pretty good guy to get some pointers from right. He has that pitch that Greg Maddox brought in right that sinker. You started at the left handers hip and you bring it back in a very difficult pitch to master. Greg Maddox brought it in vogue and made a living off of doing this the changeup. Kyle Hendricks has a terrific changeup. Not as good as Greg Maddox. In my opinion, that was Mad Dog's best pitch, the straight changeup. The curveball. This is a good curveball. At times, particularly early on in his Cub days, Greg Maddox had a really good curveball. But the similarities also fielding their position. 
if you're not going to strike a lot of guys out and you pitch the contact, you better be ready to field your position. None were better for nearly 20 years than Greg Maddox. Kyle Hendricks does a good job getting off, getting to first base, and he's a very accurate thrower. How about this play oh. here from Greg Maddox, right? The mad dog. Two similar kind of guys. The ultimate quote from Greg Maddox, right? He pitches a lot like he did. He's not going to overpower you, but when you look at, and I look at the numbers, 190 innings pitched, 142 hits. The league hit 207. He's not overpowering. He's one of those, but that's a comfortable 0 for 4. Yeah, you know what he's done? He's had the ability to throw the changeup inside to right-handers. It's not an easy pitch to do, and they have the confidence to go ahead and set up inside on a soft count. I mean, on a soft pitch, which throwing changeups to right-handers. We've had always heard the old wise tell you can't throw a chain up to a righty. You can't do this to a lefty if you're a lefty. Yes, you can. And I'm telling you right now, the comments of what he's done with that pitch, because you can pitch at this level with two pitches. You can pitch with fastball changeup. And now you've had in the movement, that front door sinker, that's why pitters freeze on that pitch, because mm -hmm. it looks like it's coming at you. Then it comes over a plate. Kyle Hendricks, unbelievable kid, great work ethics, and now he believes himself. And I'm telling you right now, this kid, there's no, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not a, a fluke. secret. It's not a fluke. It's nothing. This kid could pitch. What, a, what an honor to, to pitch in this game ahead of Jake Arrieta. Who won the National League Cy Young? Think about that. Won 18 Think games. about that, Greg. Six months ago, Jake Arrieta, you couldn't even make this up. He was the greatest pitcher on earth. He didn't give up runs. He didn't give up anything. He was winning games, 15 and 0, 70 and 0, 21 and 4. Now think about that. Kyle Hendricks gets, get, gets the ball in game two. Yep. We'll see if it pans out for the Chicago Cubs once again. Let's go to the Wrigley Field. Ken Rosenthal is standing by. This guy, Javi Baez, Ken. I love watching him. Love watching him swing the bat. But I think Joe Madden enjoys his defense even more. He does, Greg. And when you assess the Cubs defensively, look at their defensive efficiency rating. That's the rate at which they convert balls in play into outs. It sounds sophisticated, but it's really not. It's just how well they field. Well, the Cubs had the best rating since the 1982 Padres during the regular season, and Baez was a big reason why. And you look at him, okay, you can play him at second, you can play him, at, well, at first last night there, play him at third. He's their best defender, their best weapon in the field. What they'll do is they'll match him up with where they think the balls are going to be hit. Now, last night it was a little bit of an unusual situation because with Lester on the mound, you'd think he'd be on the left side of the infield with all the right-handed hitters. But no, they put him at second because Joe Madden felt that there would be a lot of action in the middle of the field. Baez is a great tagger. He's great at pop-ups. He's great at turning the double play. And obviously you saw a couple of plays where he played a pivotal role. He's at second tonight, more traditional because of the right-hander on the mound. But he's a guy that they trust quite a bit defensively. Defensive versatility, great athlete, popping his bat. You could also give those attributes to Eduardo Nunez. There's a reason why the Giants went out and acquired this guy from the Minnesota Twins. He was having an all-star season, not in the lineup again at third base. Instead, it's Gillespie. What is the health status on Nunez? Well, he's day-to-day, -day, Greg, and we saw him pinch hit last night. If you remember, in the ninth inning, pinch hit for Brandon Belt against Chapman. Why? Because Nunez has the kind of bat speed, really, that's pretty rare in the game, the kind that can catch up to Chapman. But on this play, he barely ran. And Bruce Bochy just told us he frankly expected better based on what Nunez had told him he was capable of doing. So they again will use him as a pinch hitter if Chapman is in the game, if it comes up in the right spot in the order. But they're a little bit wary because Nunez did not run well last night. He was out here running again earlier, but it's the same situation. Day to day, he can't start yet. The only way he will start, Greg, is if this gets to game five, maybe then against the left-handed John Lester. Hard to get those uh, hamstrings warm when it's 50 degrees and there's wind in your face. Ken Rosenthal there on the north side of Chicago. Kenny, thank you very much. Let's talk about the lineups now. We'll begin with the San Francisco Giants. Denard Span back in the lineup, not Hernandez because of the right-hander on the mound. Then it's Brandon Belt, Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and Brandon Crawford hitting fifth playing shortstop. Angel Pagan in left. Connor Gillespie's hitting seventh at third base. Joe Panic hits eighth in front of Jess Samarja who can swing the stick. A little bit of great athlete. As for the Chicago Cubs, Dexter Fowler atop the order, then it's Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, Ben Zobrist in left field once again, which means Javi Baez is back at second base for the Cubs. He's got to play. I mean, the way he looked last, he's got to stay in this series. Wilson Contreras, not David Ross, is the catcher in this ballgame. It's a rarity that you see two shortstops hitting fifth 
Uh, that's the case here, Crawford and Addison Russell. But as for the San Francisco Giants, uh, Kev, I was a bit surprised to see Denard Span not in the lineup. It's hard to second guess. I get it, Bruce Bochy, a Hall of Fame. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame as a, as a manager. But Denard Span ended the year on a high note, playing really well, and he's their best base stealer. And you just thought with John Lester and all of his issues trying to stop the running game that Denard Span's a must in the lineup, right? You would think that, Greg, but let's give some credit to what Joe Madden and the Cubs have done. You know, and I understand your point. It makes a lot of sense. But people think about, like, you know, the John Lester issues and let's try to, you know, run. It's not as easy as people think. We sit back and go, just run, run. He's not going to throw it first. No, John Lester does a great job. And let's talk about some of the positives. He holds the ball. He changes his slide step. It's a three-second, four-second, five-second delivery. Next pitch, two-second delivery. The defensive scheme that the Madden has figured out to work around this issue it's worked. David Ross throws amazing behind the plate. Very underrated behind the plate. How quick his arm still is as mm -hmm. Grandpa Rossi. So there's so many different things that the Cubs do to kind of mask this situation. But give credit to Lester. Give credit to David Ross right here. And so, you know what? I, 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 I understand because uh, Denard Span, this is a great player. And this is your leadoff guy. And like you said, he went through a struggle bunny about two weeks before the season ended, and then yeah. got back on track. Right, right. So that's what we're talking about. But I do like what the way the Cubs have handled the situation, and I'm not here to second-guess Bruce Bochy by any means. One question I have for you, the inability of Lester to throw over to first base. Watching the game last night, and you watch runners, wouldn't you assume that you would try to get as big a lead as you could over there at first base? If you know you're going to steal, take a big leak and just in dare him to go ahead and throw over. That's the thing. That's the thing that you can do to pitchers that don't like throwing over is, is extend your lead, extend your lead, make him step off, make him do the, the you know, the, the pump fake. But it's not as easy people you hear like, why are they just running? Run, run early, run early. That's not it. You are, you are in a postseason game. I mean, your heart rate's already going. You're trying to get a good jump. But, yes, Danny, you make a great point. I'm getting a bigger lead and now just creeping out there, and then, boom, you know, you're going to leave. And he's staring at you. Of he, he's, he's lefty. Looking he's, right like, at you. he's looking right and, at you. By the way, he's big and rich. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This is not a poor little guy, okay? Maybe it's a little lefty, but this is big, big old country. Yeah. He might tackle if you get up too quick. I, I'm just glad Javi Baez is back in the lineup because, you know, Joe Madden's known for shuffling up his order a yes. little bit. Nah, yeah, the matchup doesn't mean make sense. You're going to sit because Baez looked like the best player in the field last night. He just did. But with all the great young talent that they have, who's the one guy that always catches your eye when you watch the Chicago Cubs? It's Chris Bryant. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you some stuff about Chris Bryant, but this kid right here is remarkable. Why offensively? We know what he can do offensively. But he plays everywhere for a big, strong first rounder, third baseman, good looking, blue eyes. This kid's been over there at first base. Flawlessly feeding Jake Arietta, looking good. We're going to move over to center field. No problem, Skipper. Center field, what? Yeah, yeah. Let me just take this normal, typical route perfectly. Right field. Okay, Skipper, I got you in right. Right handed hitter, opposite field. Chris Bryant, great jump. Makes that play look easy. Great. How about left field? Let's go to left field, Chris Bryant. No problem. Brandon, Brandon Phillips, ball in the gap. Let me make this diving play. Some might say he could have made it not diving. No, no, he made the play. Hey, we're going to go back to third. This is my position. This is where I signed, Mr. San Diego boy. Howitzer of an arm. On point, Chris Bryant, big fella, can also move, get up. Hit him down there, down there, Rizzo. And you know what? From the left side, left hand, no problem. I'll make the diving play to react this thing. This kid, now we'll go offensively. Don't throw him in. A lot of big guys, Danny, you think, let me pound the ball in, pound the ball in to the big old kid. Well, let me just show you where he does, does the balls inside. There's one off the plate. There's one inside. There's one inside. And you know what he's doing, everyone? He's circling the pillows. He has got the perfect home run swing. And as you can see right there, don't make a mistake inside. Don't make a mistake. Maybe a little bit up. He handles the ball down. He's a remarkable young man. He's a kid you root for. Tremendous. If you have a daughter, you want him to marry him. I'm going to tell you, that want him to marry her. That's the kind of guy this guy is. Humble, awesome, and you can use him everywhere. You know, it's hard to believe there was so much hype around Chris Bryant that he actually has almost been better than the hype. Yeah. I didn't realize how versatile, and that was a great tape, left field, center field, third base. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he'll do this in the middle of the game. He'll be in the outfield and get a glove and play third base. And he says it's not and, a distraction. And he never heard him complain. And he's yeah, good everywhere.
I would a lot of guys. Guy, like, I only want to play short. Nope, I'm only a second baseman. Nope, I'm. A, you know the Eagles you deal with. The, the, the managers got to deal with 25 guys, 25 different salaries, 25 different scenes. Baseball players, egos. Can you believe that? As good as guys no. we are, but we, we walk in, we're like, this is us. <laughs> Chris Bryant can sit here and go, no, I want to be the greatest, most home run hit. I'll do whatever I can to make the team win and still hit. Hasn't affected his offense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're worried about right field, or worried about first base, or worried about left. No, <laughs> I'm gonna still hit homers. That's that. That's a fact. Put down 40. I'm still hitting 40 and driving 100, but you just put me wherever you want to put me. What is that? You guys walk in with doing what? This it's is a little sweat, little shitty. You know, this sometimes you hit a home run, Greg, you let them know that, you know, I mean, you know, or 6-3. Yeah. Uh, hey, game two is going to be fun. It's coming your way 8 p.m. Eastern here on MLB Network. We want to know from you, who do you think is going to win? Uh, Samarja Hendricks, live from Wrigley. Vote hashtag SFG wins or hashtag CHC wins. I would dare a Cub fan to go, I don't know, I feel really good. I think the Giants will win this game. <laughs> and we come back. Why were fans going crazy during the seventh inning stretch? Why? Why? Maybe it has something to do with this guy, Ryan Dempster. We'll talk to him next. MLB Tonight is presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. Seriously good bourbon, straight from Kentucky. Proud sponsor of the 2016 World Series. Nothing worth having comes easy. You have to get up every morning and put in the work. Give them another. Time, effort, commitment. These are your tools. You have to understand that there are no shortcuts here. Whether you're playing in the majors or making seriously good bourbon, you know the greatest achievements in life don't just happen. They're earned. If you have a typical airline credit card, you only earn double miles when you buy stuff from that airline. Wait, is this where you typically shop? You should be getting double miles on every purchase. Switch to the Capital One Venture card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, everywhere, every day. Not just airline purchases. Seriously, double miles, everywhere. What's in your wallet? You can't always protect her. Make sure her tires will. The Michelin Premier Tire with Evergrip technology. Even when half worn, it's still safe. Safe when new, safe when worn. What's it gonna be? An oven baked DiGiorno or waiting for delivery? Did you have that beard when we ordered? Oh. A hot, fresh baked crust or? Did we order extra soggy? Don't settle for delivery, rise to the occasion. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Today we're gonna to be comparing these two truck beds. Let's start over here with this aluminum bed. Put your toolbox up here. Whoa. That's a big hole. That is unbelievable. Now let's check out the roll-formed steel bed of the Silverado. Same spot, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. It's truck month. Find your tag and get over 11,000 total value on this Silverado All-Star. Or now through October 10th, get 0% financing for 72 months on all 2016 Silverado pickups. In LDS Game 2 tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on MLB Network. I'm all about my bed. This mattress is dangerously comfortable. When I get in, I literally say, ah. Introducing the Lisa mattress. A better place to sleep. This bed hugs my body. I'm now a morning person. The Lisa mattress is designed to provide strong support, relieve pressure, and optimize airflow to keep you cool. Hello, bed of my dreams. Order online. We'll build it, box it, and ship it to your door for you to enjoy. Sleep on it for up to 100 nights and love it, or you'll get a full refund. Shipping and returns are free and easy. I love my Lisa. Today is gonna be great. Read our reviews, then try the Lisa mattress in your own home. Order now and get $75 off. Go to buylisa.com today. You need this bed. Welcome back to MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. So the Dodgers and the Nationals get postponed. That just means Sunday is going to be awesome uh, on FS1 at 1 p.m. Eastern. It's game two, Hill versus Roark. And then at 4 p.m. on TBS, you'll see the Indians look for the three-game sweep at Fenway against the Red Sox. The late one, Rangers trying to avoid the sweep north of the border against the Toronto Blue Jays. 
One away, bottom of the eighth inning. Fans get to their feet again. And even Bill Murray saying, let's go. Uh, welcome back to MLB tonight. Uh, I thought the two best performances last night were Lester and Cueto, but then I just found out who sang the seventh inning stretch, mm. take me out to the ball game last night, and he joins us now live from Wrigley Field. It's Ryan Dempster. Ryan Dempster, one of our great analysts here at MLB Network. Uh, do you feel relieved knowing that you don't have to perform tonight after last night? Because that had to be nerve wracking. Oh my God, are you kidding me? It was unbelievable. Like I did it earlier this year, and I did this uh, a whole bit where I did it as Harry Carey. Piece of cake, no problem. I get in character, I can do it. When you're yourself and you're up there, and you realize that you have to like put it together and and don't botch this thing, don't mess it up. It, it's that's a big, huge, important moment in my life, and uh, I'm glad that me and Woody got through it unscathed. Had a great time. The Cubbies went on, scored a run, and got a W. We're hearing great things about this performance. So in case you missed it at home, here now Ryan Dempster singing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." Watch this. Nice and loud. All right, here we go. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Four is one, two, three strikes. You're out at the old ball game. All right, Cubbies, let's go, boys. Let's get some runs. Ryan Dempster, Ken Millar Thanks. here, your old roommate, your good friend, your brother. Why weren't you wearing a hat right there like Kerry Woodward? <laughs> It's a, it's a great question. It was debatable. I didn't know, like, just like right now, I should probably have one on, at least a beanie cap or something. It's a little chilly. I got to tell you, too, the best part of the whole thing was they say, come upstairs, you know, like after the last out of the six innings, mate, just walk up there. Only problem was John Lester threw a five-pitch inning. I had to get a full sprint up the stairs. I showed up. I needed, a, like, a ventilator or something by the time I got up there. Oh, my God. A lot of fun last night. Hey, Ryan and Stan, let's get this serious. Some talk about John Lester. A lot of Cub fans were like, 155 million for this guy it's been he's worth every penny he was brilliant in game one absolutely that's why you pay him that kind of money you don't pay him because he's great in the regular season you pay him because he can try and take you to the promised land and you know you look at what he did last night he was absolutely dominating both sides of the plate he had a great fastball going four seam and cutter he had that sinker working last night it was a huge pitch for him especially those right hand hitters down and away mixing in the curveball just did a tremendous job you know, at the end of the day, two great guys went out there and, and pitched their tails off. But at the end of the day, he's the one who didn't make the mistake. And, and that's why you go out there, you give him the huge contract to set the tone like that after a long layoff. Came out shooting, uh, firing bullets in there, just doing a great job, pumping the strike zone, you know, relying on his defense. And just uh, him and David Ross worked wonderfully together. And, uh, and they, because of that, they came around with a, you know, a, a one to nothing win in game one. Ryan Dempster, Kevin Millar here again doing some investigating reporting again, and you sound mm -hmm. so excited. So will you get excited to explain to viewers on David Ross, the intangibles he brings, aside from the gray hair and the quick feet and the throw to first base and the second base, talk to me about David Ross, how much he's meant to this club. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, you know, all year you've been hearing about it, the Grandpa Rossi stories. And, and uh, I, I had a luxury of playing with this guy for one season, okay? And I feel like I played with him for 20. He is an ultimate team leader, the ability to, to read a, a clubhouse, a dugout, know when to say the right thing, uh, know who, whose button he has to push in order to get the best out of him. And, and case in point with John Lester last night, this is a guy that goes out there and gets the best out of his pitchers, um, you know, provides uh, leadership behind the plate, uh, a rock solid solid catcher back there throwing guys out at second base back picking at first base doing everything he needs to do and and hopefully going and getting sent off on the right note but you can't speak enough good things about this guy uh, he, he's just a tremendous teammate a team leader and they're lucky to have him back there behind the plate I like your hair I don't think you need a hat. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. I, I, just want you I to felt know good about it today. When I left, you know, I, I ran my hands through the three pieces up there and I felt good about what I had. <laughs> Ryan Dempster, always a joy. Oh, Thank you for the time today. I appreciate it, buddy. Absolutely, guys. You got it. All right, ballpark cam in Nationals Park. Not as much fun there, like hanging out with our friend Ryan Dempster. Uh, they postponed this game. They're going to play it on Sunday. So you wonder what the Dodgers and the homestanding Nationals think about this news. Let's hear from them.
we met with both teams. I think there was a lot of consensus that no matter who controlled the game, that the right decision here was to cancel and play in good weather tomorrow. We hate to cancel. We hate to make travel worse than it was originally intended to be. But it just doesn't look like we're going to have a situation that would be safe for the players to play. I think it's actually going to help him. And, uh, you know, another day's rest. And uh, he really hadn't had on six days rest too often or more. And so I think it's going to help Tanner because uh, I tell you, this guy comes to pitch and it doesn't matter rain, shine, or whatever. We all had an idea that it wasn't going to be on time, so I don't think guys completely launched um, full bore. Um, and then, you know, we were still kind of waiting to hear, you know, when a start time might be, and then, you know, the game was canceled. So I don't think everybody got to uh, to full brew, to say the least. It just makes Sunday that much more fun. As for how it realigns this series, they're going to go from Sunday in D.C. to Los Angeles on Monday. So they're going to have to quickly fly across the country. Gio Gonzalez against Kenta Maeda. At the moment, it's Julio Arias, the young left-hander, uh, who will pitch game four. We do not know who will get that nod from Dusty Baker and the Washington Nationals. Uh, we come back on this edition of MLB Tonight as we continue to set the stage for our game, Cubs-Giants. Let's talk about what's going to happen on the American League side. Para sweeps, possibly? Mm. We'll get into that next. Tonight, watch an exclusive NLDS Game 2 live on MLB Network as Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and the Cubs battle Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and the Giants. Tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on MLB Network. Telecast presented by GEICO. Get the new iPhone on us when you switch to AT&T and have Direct TV. These are hands. They're not necessary to open the sliding doors on the all-new Chrysler Pacifica. You know, traverse also means wander, like your equipment is wandering down the driveway. Current owners or lessees of FCA or competitive vehicles finance and get 2,000 total cash allowance on the all-new Chrysler Pacifica. America, all through October, the DQ5 Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world-famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ5 Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let five buck freedom ring. My girl Cindy took advantage of Lowe's worry-free 30-day satisfaction guarantee on appliances. So it looks like it's out with the old and in with the new, huh, Cindy? Ain't no thing. I don't need no fancy ice dispenser. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we going? Where are they taking me? Yeah! Upgrade, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Cindy. Mm-hmm. This stainless steel feel good on me. Turn the trips you have to take into one you'll never forget. Expedia Plus Rewards. Earn points on over one million hotels, flights, and packages. Decision time here at the Ownership Classic. Lining up a call with his broker to ask about those fees. I do not envy him at all. Bob, I think he's gonna do it. Incredible, he's making the call. Mark, Steve. I got a couple of questions. That's how legends are born, folks. Are you asking enough questions about the way your wealth is managed? Wealth Management at Charles Schwab. Tonight's been great. Yeah. You look amazing. You take after your mom. She's hot. No winter, shh. The subtle fragrance of Axe Black. MLB Tonight brings you closer to the postseason. My goodness! With two division series games in October, live on MLB Network, or stream live on the At Bat app, the analyst of MLB Tonight bringing you closer to the game. Could you pass the sugar? <laughs> hey, 
Piece of cake. Nice flowers, Lou. You can't rewrite history. <laughs> but every October, new history is made. Catch up with the postseason on MLB Network. Should have had that. Yeah, I've been there. Find it. Hey, folks, a reminder, you can help people affected by Hurricane Matthew by simply texting Matthew to 90999 to no donate $10 to American Cross, American Red Cross Hurricane Matthew Relief. Cleveland, let me hear you. Always believe some, Cleveland. Always us against the world. Cleveland against the world. Let's go. If that doesn't get you ready for game two, I don't know what will. Blue Jays can win it. They will take a two games to none stranglehold on this best of five series. Time to play ball here in Arlington, Texas. will take a 2-0 lead one went away from advancing to the ALCS I'm excited um, you know this is why you work so hard for, for moments like these opportunities like these this thing's far from over you know we need to keep playing good baseball you know they had the best record in the American League which is very very hard to do for a reason you know you don't luck into that uh, so we got to come out and play good baseball there will be no panic there will be no reactionary type situation. You cannot think about winning two games, two games, two games in one day. I think that we got to go day by day now. I don't think any of you guys here are worried about it. I mean, all you get, as you can see, everybody's loose, having fun, relaxed. So, just come out tomorrow, and uh, you know we're gonna get after it, and hopefully it works out. I'm gonna go out there and compete, um, have a good time. Um, I don't feel like anything changes for me. I got to go out there and uh, get outs and be productive. Yeah, you do, Colby, and you have to do it in really hostile environment. Rogers Center is going to be jumping. You, both, you guys both play for the Blue, Blue Jays. You know what this is like. The Blue Jays are out to sweep the Texas Rangers. Is it looking this terrible for the Rangers right now? Uh, listen, you, you want to never say never, and there's, th there's not that much hope, but I, I think right now the Rangers are up against it for a couple of reasons. They've yet to really run into the good part of the pitching staff. They're going to get that in game three. Aaron Sanchez, right? And then they're going to get Marcus Stroman, who was really good, too. This is a really good team, and I'm going to go out on a limb, and when they hit like they're hitting right now, I personally think they're the best team in the American League, and it wouldn't surprise me to see the Toronto Blue Jays get to the World Series. I think the Orioles did a super job of getting into the wild card. The Blue Jays hitting, for whatever reason, Kevin Millar, it just wasn't there. They had pockets. Edwin Encarnacion was the most consistent. Tulo's getting hot, Batista's getting hot, and Carnacion's getting hot right now. They're all getting hot at the right time with good pitching. I, I just think right now it's going to be close to impossible for the Rangers to come back and win this series. When they're all hitting, it's tough. They went through a period before the season ended that they weren't hitting very well, okay? And at home, you talked about, you know, their home uh, crowds and fans, and they led the league in, in, in attendance, but, you know, they lost every home series in September. So, it's, it's pretty funny how this can work. I don't say the Rangers are out of it by any means. I love Bannister. I love that moxie he brings as a manager. This team was probably the most complete team going into the postseason for me, in my opinion, the Rangers. They've had this layoff. Their timing's off. Offensively, they have not swung the bats great. Tip your cat to Hap and uh, Estrada. But I wouldn't say out. Are you going to make a living down 0-2 in a five-game series? No. Trust me when I say this. they got some veterans on that club, the Rangers. They understand where they're at. They understand they got to try to win one game. You get one game of these. It's going to be hard, but you get one game, and then you start seeing, oh, boy. Sounds like you're confident they will not be swept. I'm pretty confident they won't be swept. Kobe Lewis, say what you want about this young man. He is awesome. I think he, he just has a presence about him. He doesn't have overpowering stuff. He just finds a way to win games, guys. Mm -hmm. He finds a way to win games, and this yeah. is why he's grabbing the ball. The spin rate isn't going to make people go, wow. Yeah, you're like, whoa, look at the velocity. It was 98 on the, the black. Trico. 
It's just like when you watch Marco Estrada. You and I were talking about this right. yesterday. This postseason, you're usually power, power, power. We want to see 95 to 98, right? Which is Aaron Sanchez. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. Right? That, that's true. But I'm just saying Marco Estrada gets up there, 87, nice change. Up, curb, boop, 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 da, 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 da. Next thing you know, he's like, and they just shut the Rangers out mm -hmm. at home to a team that can play and a great home record. Like, so well, this is going to be interesting. I, don't, I just don't know. I don't. I, not saying they're not get swept. I'm just saying this, I, this is one team that come back if they can. We have a program a reminder for you. We have an exclusive Spanish language telecast of this game three of the American mm. League Division Series. Yeah, Rangers, Blue Jays. Kev, are you doing uh, I am. Are you the analyst? Yeah, Pachuca de Pollo, Rose Blanco. That's uh, rice, white rice, actually, with uh, Pachuca de Pollo would be chicken breast. So all of that and more Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern live here. Batea de Agua. That gives me a MLB bottle of agua. Network. This is yeah. going to be a great broadcast. You might win an Emmy. Thank you. Hey, Thank as you. for the other uh, ALDS, the Cleveland Indians, they feel good about themselves. They win the first two games. Yes, Bauer tips his cap, doesn't even go five. But they're up 2-0, going to Fenway. Heidi Watney caught up with Big Poppy, asked his thoughts about this 2-0 hole. David, you guys, backs against the wall. You're in an 0-2 hole. Win or go home. Last night, you said you were angry. Why are you angry? I think just that's how I am when I lose. <laughs> you know, losing is not fun. So, and I just, just you know, feel like you can do things better, and and uh, you haven't, you haven't played like, you know, you got people used to it. So that's what happened. And you play bad baseball. So hopefully uh, tomorrow is a different day and, and bring our best. Have you had a chance to think that Sunday's game could be your very last game? Not really. But it's going to happen regardless at some point, you know, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about it. Hopefully it's not. Clay Buckholz has been up and down for you guys this year, but he's pitched better lately. What have you seen from him as a teammate that's led to his success and gives you guys confidence in him for tomorrow? El Flaco, he had good stuff. I mean, he had been uh, on the stage for the playoffs. So if we come, to, if, if we come back tomorrow and, and, and reform at the highest level, I won't be surprised. That's him. You've been through a lot of these. You have been in the hole. You guys have fought back. You've been on those teams. What do you need out of this team? Is there something that you're going to say to the guys tomorrow? Is there something you guys are going to do? What are what are you, what's your role in this tomorrow? I think just come back and play the game. You know, play play the the way we normally do it, and, and then we're going to see results. You know, we haven't been able to do it. Bring in Malar for a speech, maybe. <laughs> Probably one five. Yeah, well, you know, Flacco, for ladies and gentlemen, means skinny, so they call Clay Buckle skinny, El Flacco. Mm. That's for your information. That, he threw that out there, and I'm glad you cleared that up. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Buckholz in a game like this? Uh, I, I don't think the Red Sox are done. I feel really strongly that the Blue Jays are sweeping the Rangers. I don't feel that the Indians are sweeping the Boston Red Sox. This is too good of a team, and they've laid two eggs. Their starting pitching wasn't as good in game one and game two. Listen. I don't think the Indians are feeling super duper confident about Josh Tomlin. You look at the one loss record. I think with Clay Buckholz, he's going to be on a short leash. I like what I saw his last handful of starts. This is too good of a team to go down three games. There will be a fourth game. I cannot see the Indians sweeping the Boston Red Sox. And let me just tell you something about Clay Buckholz. First four months of the year, they're trying to get him out of the city. Last couple months, he has thrown the ball great. He's went to the bullpen, didn't say a word about it, got his stuff right, came back out, spot started, threw well, went back to the bullpen, didn't hear anything, came back out, and he's pitched great. And since he's went into the stretch, there's no more windup. He will start the game tomorrow out of the stretch. So once he's found that out, Chili Davis gave him this advice. The hitting coach, try to go to the stretch, simplify things. Went to the stretch, boom, he has found his thing. And I'm telling you right now, Clay Buckholz, the ball's coming out of his hand as well as it has since 2000. 13 when he started off 9 0. Greg, I think that 9 0 or 10 0. Yeah, well, we'll, you know, get a research, champs, we'll get a researcher on that. Mark uh, Matcham. Andrew Miller is going to pitch two innings in this game. Really? You don't think so? He's going to be in high Andrew leverage. Andrew Miller. High is leverage, pitching. he'll be in. He'll throw did he 30 change to the game? 40. Yes. Did, did, did Terry Frank, we talked about bullpen since the Royals came on the set in 2013 or uh, 14. Three headed monster. 15, right? Did, did Tito change this game, bringing in the, the big dog in the, in the fifth, fifth, sixth? I think so. Right now, you gotta start seeing this a little bit, right? But you can't do it unless you know you got an ace in Corey. Well, unless you got fifty million dollars in the bullpen. You need a guy that's gonna eat up innings, and he did that in game True. two. But Andrew Miller is gonna pitch at some point in this ball game. We come back on MLB tonight, back to our game, which is about less than ninety minutes away. Uh, still ahead, Cup fans know these images all too well. 
Uh, we're going to take a look back at history loaded with losing for a franchise that's finally expected to win it all when MLB Tonight rolls on. Hey. I've made plans for later in case the state doesn't go well. Same here. Wouldn't it be great if everyone said what they meant? The City Double Cash Card does. Earn 1% cash back when you buy and 1% as you pay. Double means double. Hey, America. Meet Jimmy. He just got his license, and look at him. He's already restoring this beast himself. He gets help from AutoZone and specialized tools from our free loan -a tool program. Can't wait to see what this kid fixes up next. With our help, you can always fix your car with confidence. Hoods up, America. Very nice. Get in the zone, auto zone. I overpack, but my guy knows what to bring. Like Viagra single packs for ED. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain or Adempus for pulmonary hypertension. Your blood pressure could drop to an unsafe level. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra single packs. Have you ever noticed how some people in life seem to get away with everything? We live our lives from an elevated perspective. You're late. Time's a relative concept. Well, I see you have mastered the laws of gravity. We are the masters of time and space. And we all drive Jaguars. Ha, ha, ha. The all-new Jaguar F-Pace. For great offers, visit your local Jaguar retailer today. You know, it's funny, because his ex-fip is still quite good, but he is giving up the home runs. I mean, that's a problem. His exit velocity is still is pretty bad. Right? Oh, yeah. Your software is so stable now, he really doesn't have a chance to get upset about anything. I think he just misses it. Software and application monitoring made easy. New Relic. How MLB manages performance. Is your lunch break a race against the clock? You run here, you run there, until everything comes to a screeching halt. Tick, tick, tick. Now is the time for a five-hour energy protein shot. 21 grams of protein, the energy you need for the rest of your day, and 100 little calories. It's not lunch. It's energy and protein. And a lot faster than fast food. Five-hour energy protein shots. Energy, protein, 100 calories. Tonight, watch an exclusive NLDS Game 2 live on MLB Network as Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and the Cubs battle Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and the Giants. Tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on MLB Network. Telecast presented by GEICO. MLB Tonight brings you closer to the postseason. My goodness! With two division series games in October, live on MLB Network, or stream live on the At Bat app, the analyst of MLB Tonight, bringing you closer to the game. They did it in style. They've had a, just an unbelievable season. It's not one guy. It, it's a bunch of people that are clicking on all cylinders for the Chicago Cubs. This club is made for October. This year, we saw a super team. They have the best, the deepest rotation in baseball. Miguel Montero, opposite field. You need another example as to why this may be the Cubs' year? Going into every season, Cub fans are hopeful they can finally shed that lovable loser title and win their first championship since 1908. This year, it seems this team has the best chance of breaking that drought. And after last night's victory, they're one game closer. But after 108 years, Northsiders know that anything can happen in the month of October. Here now, Paul Severino for a quick look back at some of those heartbreaking moments that have given Cub fans nightmares for years. During the winter of 1984 for Christmas, uh, a buddy got me a t-shirt that said Chicago Cubs World Champs 1908. And to this day, I mean at least once a week, I sleep in that t-shirt. 1908, it's been 108 years since the Cubs last won a World Series championship. They haven't even been to the Fall Classic since 1945. 
and the few times they've gotten close, it's ended in heartbreak. In 1969, the Cubs make a run. All that's standing between them and the pennant is an expansion team for Pete's sake. The Cubs tied in the sixth, but who's that crossing in front of their dugout? It's not Lady Luck. As luck would have it, the Cubs had an eight-game lead in mid-August before blowing it down the stretch. Northsiders would have to wait another 15 years for a postseason opportunity. 84 felt like one of those real teams. You know, there was some magic happening. It had been so long, and finally the Cubs make the postseason, and then they win the first two in the playoffs, and they're one win away from the World Series. The Cubs would drop the next two in San Diego, forcing a deciding game five in the LCS. With Chicago up 3-2 in the seventh, eight outs away from a trip to the World Series, Tim Flannery came to the plate. Ground ball hit the dirt. The Padres tied the game on Leon Durham's error and later that inning would take the lead for good. It was painful to get that close and then to, to fall short one more time. The Padres have the National League pennant. Three times they had rolled champagne out into their clubhouse to celebrate and three times they wheeled it back out before the game was over. And the third time we ended up buying their champagne half price and we not only beat the Cubs, we drank their champagne. Nearly two decades later, the pain for the Wrigley faithful was even worse. This time, the Cubs were five outs away from the World Series. Up 3-0 in Game 6 of the NLCS, you know what happened next. Bartman. 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 Again in the air, down the left field line. A long reaching into the stands and couldn't get it, and he's livid with a fan. And it's safe to say that every Cub fan has to be wondering right now, is the curse of the Billy Goat alive and well? That one play would just be a footnote if a bunch of other stuff didn't happen subsequently. And bobbled by Gonzalez and everybody's safe. I'm walking out of Rigby Field. A fan says to me, Mr. Will, Cubs will get him tomorrow. I said, not a chance. And the Florida Marlins have come back from three games to one down to win the National League pennant. So after 108 years, haven't Cubs fans waited long enough? Maybe, just maybe, this will finally be their year. The Cubs are going against a strong narrative. So they have to beat not only the other teams in the National League, they have to beat this monkey on their back. It is going to happen. I honestly believe that, mainly because of what this team this season is doing. You can win it all. You can, you can stop thinking about this shit. That would be nice. That 1908 Chicago Cubs World Series t-shirt that I sleep in, I'll finally be able to put it away and find me a new one. We have to talk about the history of the Chicago Cubs. We, we must because it is the biggest story. It's captivating the country. But, Kev, you kind of relate to what Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo and Dexter Fowler, all these questions that we're asking mm. kids that have nothing to do with 1908 or this long lineage of losing. For the Chicago, Chicago Cubs, when you were with the Red Sox in 04, was it a distraction? Was it annoying that you were, talk, you were talking about history you had nothing to do with? Yeah, you understand it as a baseball player because we're fans of the game, and now you're in the arena and you're playing the game. But it does get annoying. It's not so much a distraction. It's annoying because, like I always said, we weren't here 86 years. So you start answering these questions better, and then you start answering them if you lose a game because that's what happens, and then they're going to choke again. The Red Sox are going to lose again. Mm -hmm. And the Bill Buckner in 86, and you're like, oh, boy, here we go. Like if you make an error, errors are part of baseball. Strikes out, strikeouts are part of baseball. Losses are part of baseball. There's a winner and there's a loser. But that's what they are constantly have to go. Is this the year? It's been 100 years. The Cubbies. So as a Red Sox, you just get numb to it. You're like, we tap out. Let's just go boys club in these, this locker room right here. And then we're going to focus on us because we weren't there 86 years ago. And next thing you know, we got Folk, Babe Ruth, number, Edgar Renteria, grounds out, flips over to Doug McCavich. And next thing you know, we got 86 years of broken curse. But now we're Aerosmith. So now it goes both ways. <laughs> you turn into Aerosmith. Now you're a rock star, right? So it, 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 you take the good with the bad. That said, I feel like we're watching Chicago Cubs this postseason waiting for the next Bartman moment to justify that the curse of the Billy Goat actually exists. Don't, aren't you feeling the same way? Well, it, I'm going to tell you, I grew up in that area, and, and, it, and it, it runs deeper. It, because in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and early 90s, before the explosion of cable TV, WGN, and the Cubs were kind of branded the lovable losers. And I don't want to say 
they accept the, the losing culture. But in 2003, it all changed because that was a really good team. And that's where this modern era where the Cub fan decided, like, wait a minute, we don't want to be the lovable losers anymore. And in 03, it changed. And in 07 and 08, their hearts were broken again. Two really good teams back to back that couldn't get, you know, to the World Series. It's a different culture now, Greg. But I will say this. It all changed when they hired Joe Madden. And I think at his press conference the day he was hired, they wanted to embrace the 1908. He gets it. They understand it, and they're not afraid of it. And that's why I think it's going to be different in 2016. This is the best Chicago Cubs team in my lifetime. Yeah. This is the best team. It's better different than, than those other clubs you talked about. Better than 2003. And you were around 100 right. years ago, right. Dan. This is that. the best Cub team. I'm not sure if it's going to happen in 2016, but it's going to happen really soon. Is it good for baseball for them to win the World Series right now? Yes. Nope. You say no. You nope. say no. No, I think it just linked no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, what are you talking you about? You want it to go on forever. Why? Hey, right. You know why it's good? Because it'll be the greatest, biggest thing you've ever seen. People ask, is it going to be bigger than the Red Sox? Now, ours, well, we had 3.4 million at that parade. Now, say that out loud. 3.4 million 4 or 7 million. million whatever. That, that city of Boston is small. We had duck boats go in the water, but think about that. It was amazing. If the Cubs do it, will it be bigger? That's the question. I think so. I, I really – it, it goes deeper. If you – you know, we, we're fortunate to do 30 teams in 30 that. days. And, and we go to Arizona, and, and you go to those games in Mesa, and you see the generations of Cub fans that are there. And it's not just kids. It's dads. It's grandpas. It's great-grandpas. It's generations. It's – it's baseball years tailgating for spring training is it, what it, it is. is. Yes. It is. Think they are that. there is there is a whole legion of Cub fans, like forty five and over, that want to win it so bad. Yeah. But we, they we want, had that up there too in Massachusetts. Right. They so want to win it so bad. We had that. They do. And now maybe they <laughs> have great no Maybe they have luck. Nineteen eighteen. Guys, what'd you think of game one of this division series? Ooh. Giants, Cubs. Uh, the wind's blowing in. Totally get it. Javi Baez, that ball barely gets out. Wow. Way to stare at the baseball for the next 40 minutes. Buster Posey, I thought this was gone. And it barely stays in the ballpark. The Cubs, they caught a couple of breaks, and they needed them. Johnny Cueto was so good in game one. Look at this. Sports Illustrated. Uh-oh. Maybe this is it. The curse of sport. SI? The SI cover uh -oh, curse? Greg. Another curse on top of the building? Uh -huh. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Hey, we got to take a break. Um, Lester did his job in game one for the Cubs. A team that thinks they have the starters lined up to sweep the Giants in this division series. Up next, Ken Rosenthal sits down with Kyle Hendricks when MLB Tonight rolls on. MLB Tonight is presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. Seriously good bourbon, straight from Kentucky. Proud sponsor of the 2016 World Series. Nothing worth having comes easy. You have to get up every morning and put in the work. Give them another. Time, effort, commitment. These are your tools. You have to understand that there are no shortcuts here. Whether you're playing in the majors, or making seriously good bourbon. You know the greatest achievements in life don't just happen. They're earned. Look at all these purchases you made with your airline credit card. Hold on, you only got double miles on stuff you bought from that airline? Let me show you something better. The Capital One Venture Card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase. Not just airline purchases. Every purchase, everywhere, every day. No, really, double miles on all of them. What's in your wallet? You can't always protect her. Make sure her tires will. The Michelin Premier Tire with Evergrip technology. Even when half worn, it's still safe. Safe when new, safe when worn. What's it going to be, an oven-baked DiGiorno or waiting for delivery? Did you have that beard when we ordered? Oh. A hot, fresh-baked crust or... Did we order extra soggy? Don't settle for delivery. Rise to the occasion. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-form steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Awesome. 
Yeah. First, let's check out the aluminum bed of this truck. Wow. Holy moly. Full on crack here. Now let's check out the steel bed of the Silverado. I'd expect more dents. <laughs> no holes. It's Truck Month. Find your tag and get over 11,000 total value on this Silverado All-Star. Or now through October 10th, get 0% financing for 72 months on all 2016 Silverado pickups. In LDS Game 2, tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on MLB Network. Now playing on DirecTV Cinema. Some believe that the first mutant was born thousands of years ago. And he's going to rise again. X-Men Apocalypse is the biggest, wildest X-Men yet. Let's go to war. It's all of us against a god. You're not students anymore. You're X-Men. X-Men Apocalypse. Movies start at Channel 125. Our players are challenged every time they hit this field. But every moment in life is a challenge for a young man with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a lethal genetic disorder. You can help. Text CURE to 90999 to donate $5. The American Football Coaches Association's Coach to Cure MD. Text CURE to 90999. Coach to Cure MD, because these young men deserve a chance to win. Right, Dominic? Right, Coach. MLB Tonight brings you closer to the postseason. My goodness! With two division series games in October, live on MLB Network, or stream live on the At Bat app, the analyst of MLB Tonight bringing you closer to the game. Welcome back to MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. We are about an hour away from our exclusive coverage of game two of this National League Division Series, the San Francisco Giants against Chris Bryant and the Chicago Cubs. Now, nothing could be a must win for the Cubs, but I will say this as you watch Chris Bryant take his hacks in the cage at Wrigley. If Jeff Samarja and the Giants win game two, they go back to San Francisco game three, Arietta against this guy, Madison Bumgarner, arguably the greatest postseason pitcher of all time. So it's very important Game two tonight on the north side of Chicago. Back inside Studio 3, Greg Amsinger with you. How deep is this Cubs rotation? Last night, Joe Madden gave the ball to two-time World Series champ John Lester for their 1-0 win over the Giants in Game 3. The reigning NL Cy Young Award winner Jake Arrieta gets the nod. But tonight, they turn to Kyle Hendricks. Who? The guy with the lowest ERA in baseball, who might be the best pitcher the Cubs have. Ken Rosenthal sat down with the Cubs right-hander. Another strikeout for Hendricks, number nine. Well, that was such a beautifully pitched ball game by Kyle Hendricks. My goodness, was that fun to watch. Kyle Hendricks, the nickname is The Professor. Now, why do people call you The Professor? Where did that come from? That just came out of the blue, actually. Obviously, I think going to, uh, you know, Ivy League school, being the nerdy kid, whatever goes along with it. Uh, but I think it started with a couple of our Latin guys calling me Profesor. I think it started in Spanish, and then, I don't know, it just took off. Uh, you like yeah, it? Yeah, translated it over, and now everybody's running with it. <laughs> the more you watch this guy pitch, the more you, you become convinced of how good he really is. Now, I read a really interesting article today, and it was about your transformation this year from a two-seam changeup guy to someone who incorporated a four-seamer and curveball. Tell me how that came about. It sounds like it was quite a process. It was. Some people will tell you I can be stubborn from time to time. And also last year, uh, I was having some mechanical issues. So when I was taking the mound with mechanical issues, your confidence isn't as high as it should be. Um, I didn't have confidence in my other pitches, my curveball four seam especially, just trying to command those pitches, you know. So I really fell back on my two seam and changeup, which they are my best pitches, but in the big leagues, trying to be a two pitch pitcher as a starter, Obviously very difficult to do, and I learned that the hard way last year. That's a changeup. Hit out to right center. Ball is carrying. See you later. Coming into this year, I still started to do some of those same tendencies, wanting to throw those two pitches a lot. But and once you're presented with the information, you see the numbers against you on certain counts, certain pitches, you really don't have any other option than to make a switch or a change. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kyle Hendricks. Very sharp, works one, two, three. At the end of the day, I really just tried to stay in the moment and figure out what I need to do to make myself the best now to get these hitters out, and the rest will worry about itself. He struck him out to end the inning. Kyle Hendricks dealing again today.
September, there started to be talk about who would start game two, would it be you, would it be Jake, whatever. I wonder what it means to you to start this game at home, game two of the division series against the Giants. I think starting any playoff game for me is huge. You know, them, the team, uh, the management, Joe, whoever, having the confidence to give me the ball for any game. Uh, it started last year, you know, I'm trying to draw on those experiences from my first playoff starts last year. But any start you're getting in the playoffs is gonna be big. So the fact that it's at home, what if it would have been on the road, you know, I just would have had to deal with that. But it's just been special here overall, you know, the atmosphere, the energy of the fans, and I just can't wait to see what, what they got in store. Hendricks has been great all year, but not in his career against the San Francisco Giants, the team he's facing tonight. He's 1-2 with an ERA of 4.32, not close to his 2.13, which was the majors' best ERA, and he became the first Cubs starter to win the majors' ERA title since Big Bill Lee did it in 1938 with a 2.66 earned run average. Hey, still ahead, we check in with Bob Costas, who's set to call tonight's Giants-Cubs ball game while Dan and Kevin head to Studio 42 to show us how Joe Madden is using new methods to slow down the running game. That's next. Prepare to be amazed by stow and go seating. It stows and you go. Right. Here we go. About time, Larry. Current owners or lessees of FCA or competitive vehicles finance and get 2,000 total cash allowance on the all new Chrysler Pacifica. Get the new iPhone on us when you switch to AT&T and have Direct TV. Turn the trips you have to take into one you'll never forget. Expedia Plus Rewards. Earn points on over 1 million hotels, flights, and packages. America, all through October, the DQ 5 Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world-famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ 5 Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let 5 Buck Freedom ring! Back at the Ownership Classic, this is a crucial moment. He's really in the weeds with his broker's recommendations. What are they based on? How much do they truly cost? Oh, would you look at that? He's calling his broker, Bob. Hello, Peter. Talk about ownership. This man has the heart of a lion, and the crowd responds. Are you asking enough questions about the way your wealth is managed? Wealth Management at Charles Schwab. Ah, Carol. There she goes, using the Lowe's spot-on paint kit. Thank goodness, because now she can see how different colors look in the house before she paints, which makes her way more confident in her color choice. She should be confident, Carol. You're killing it today. <laughs> and now you're thinking to yourself, this is the part where the parrot talks about how he's a color expert. <laughs> Sparky, no. Bad dog. Bad dog. <laughs> Carol! Love your paint or we'll make it right. That's our pledge to you. Welcome to MLB Tonight as we take a closer look at Jason Kipnis. He's a great player and fun to interview. Love his personality. I think he's got a chance to be an MLB Network analyst. Hey, Kip. Hey, what's up, guys? How about you give us a little audition? Sure. <clears throat> Let's go live inside the park to Cleveland. Wow, that was good. <laughs> I think somebody's after your job, Arrow. MLB Tonight brings you closer to the game. Don't worry. I'm not after anybody's job. Yet. Could you pass the sugar? <laughs> Piece of cake. Nice flowers, Move. Huh? You can't.
can't rewrite history. <laughs> but every October, new history is made. Catch up with the postseason on MLB Network. Should have had that. Yeah, I've been there. What? Quite an atmosphere here at Wrigley Field. This whole city buzzing about this game, this team, this series. You don't expect a lot of runs given the quality of the starting pitching matchup. Fascinating to see how many different ways you can get a hitter off. Slides in the Ivy to make a brilliant catch. Watch him long enough, and he is going to make you happy. And even Bill Murray saying, let's go. How fun was that? Welcome back. We're less than one hour away from game two of this National League Division Series matchup between the San Francisco Giants and the Chicago Cubs, a game you can only see right here on MLB Network. Now calling the action tonight, Bob Costas, who joins us now live on MLB tonight. Bob, I can only imagine the energy that's in that ballpark right now and the optimism mm -hmm. for this club seems like it's spreading well beyond the north side of Chicago. Would you say, Bob, the country is rooting for the Cubs to win it all this year. Unless your team is playing against them, unless you're a Giant fan or if they get past the Giants, whomever they should meet in the next round or in the World Series if they get that far. Apart from that, they are the sentimental favorites. The difference is that they deserve to be the objective favorites because on paper, they have been the best team in baseball all year long. As for what would be in the minds of the Chicago Cubs, they have the confidence after winning game one. But they have to know the significance of the outcome of this game based on who waits for them in game three. Madison Bumgarner, who I haven't got your thoughts on, on his performance of the wild card game. He's becoming one of the greatest postseason pitchers mm -hmm. ever, Bob. Well, such is the mystique of Madison Bumgarner that when you have Jake Arrieta set to match up against him, you think of yourself as being at a disadvantage. And this is a guy who had another worldly Cy Young Award season only a year ago, but you have to give it to Bumgarner in October. And of course, anything that happens most recently stands out in the minds, especially of younger fans. I think what Bumgarner has done is that he has put himself right there with the likes of Bob Gibson and Sandy Koufax. You know, Whitey Ford once pitched something like 30 consecutive scoreless innings in World Series play, and there was just the World Series during the era of Koufax and Gibson and Ford. And more recently, you can talk about the guy I'll broadcast the game with tonight, John Smoltz, who was 15-4 and four in the postseason, won a Game 7 in an LCS for the Braves against the Pirates, and pitched seven scoreless innings against Jack Morris in that epic Game 7 of the World Series in 1991. And Kurt Schilling was a great postseason performer, but Bumgarner's name is right there on the list, and you can make an argument for him at the top of the list. Yeah, the Giants would lean on him in Game 3 to try to knock off the best team in baseball. They had the most wins in 2016, but is that a great thing? Look at this, Bob. Teams with 100 or more wins in the wild card era. 11 of them, half of the 22, advanced to the championship series. There's not a lot of success that you would expect teams with 100 or more wins in the postseason. What do you think of that? Well, because it's such a gauntlet to run, and especially the first round is dicey with it being just a best out of five instead of a best out of seven, and two off days, it can sometimes distort things 22 teams as you said since the start of the wild card era in the mid 90s have won 100 or more only six of them have advanced to the World Series only two, the 98 Yankees and the 2009 Yankees have won the World Series the Mariners won 116 in 2001 didn't even get past the ALCS of course it could have happened in earlier eras the Cleveland Indians went 111 and 43 in 1954 with one of the great pitching staffs in baseball history ran into Willie Mays and the Giants and four games later bingo they're swept out so anything can happen in a short series but it's even more treacherous now because there's three rounds to navigate so that's why the Cubs although they are the best team in baseball with their 103 wins and while they are the favorites they're still not overwhelming favorites Las Vegas puts them at 12 to 5 mm. that's still you know less than two to or more than two to one odds 
and yet those are the best odds of anyone on the board and they are the best team. We're looking forward to the action tonight game two of the National League Division Series Giants Cubs Bob Costas will have the call Bob thank you. OK Greg. Again the Chicago Cubs a team that's loaded with talent but they also have the maestro in the dugout and that guy is Joe Madden just because he's loaded with the best young position players and a terrific starting rotation doesn't mean he's giving away his creativity as for bunt defense we get to see some of that Joe Madden creativity don't we Kevin and Dan are standing by in Studio 42. Yes we do Greg and Kevin this is the thing that amazes me the Cubs have several bunt defenses you go through these in spring training but they really pulled out the bag of tricks late in the year a very unique situation you go to the pickoff last night right so we're going to have the change of gloves so Anthony Rizzo now is going to get a fielder's glove a left handed fielder's glove and a pickoff play Javi Baez sneaks in behind they get Connor Gillespie now this is what is amazing they'll bring Anthony Rizzo in from first base and virtually put him right next to the mound this is a game in Milwaukee. Ben Zobris now is taking over at first base. Look how far Anthony Rizzo is in. And I think if you're going to continue to bunt like the Brewers did here, you're bunting yourself potentially into a double play. Without a doubt, Anthony Rizzo is going to cut the lead runner. And then they put another wrinkle into this, Kev. Javi Baez breaking in from second base and crashing in. So not only do you have to worry and guard about Anthony Rizzo, but right here, Javi Baez. Now, he's unique. They can't put this play on with Ben Zobras because he's not quick enough or agile enough to go ahead and get in there. But I think what we see there is it, Anthony Rizzo is he's virtually standing right next to John Lester. It's a very unique play. He is and, and this is what happens. You can you can do all this stuff right here Danny all you want. But if you get one pitcher that can handle the bat let's just go Jeff Samar to the starting pitcher tonight. You want to play this close. You're going to get this ball at some point and you might have porcelains. This is one of those things like I said Quato you saw when that first pickup play David Ross made that pop down throw to, to Baez and they got the out early in the game. But he was not he went over to bunt he came back to hit but it was a pitch out because it was a play that put on they felt that OK we can pick up Gillespie he's getting off far enough. This is one of those things with Rizzo athletic first baseman put him up here field he throws in the bags great. You got Baez who's probably the X factor and all defensive player the best defender on on the field anytime he's on the field that he can come up here from second base and handle it. But you have to be careful and I guarantee you Matt and the Cubs know which pitchers can handle the bat and which pitchers can't handle the bat. So this is very awesome and very smart both dugouts kind of jockeying. You know you played a lot of first base in your day. Is that a scary play like if you're Anthony Rizzo and you're coming in here charging because you really don't know what that guy up in the batter's box if he's swinging or not. Yeah you're right. I mean playing the corners and you have your third base play also first second you're crashing to get the bunt the shortstop goes to third and gets out as a first baseman you're coming up here you're taking the pitcher out of the play or they're going to the third base line also so the third baseman would stay back and now first baseman we get f here and here up front but you got to be able to throw and Rizzo does a great job throwing to all bags some first baseman you know Frank Thomas Jason Giambi they didn't throw well at first base. Yeah Kevin you, know? you play first base. Yeah. Would you feel comfortable being that close to a grown man with a bat in a Major League Baseball game. You know it's funny. Yeah I, I didn't have a problem with it but you really think back now as you get older and you get smarter Greg not that I'm smarter but I'm going to tell you right now you see how close you are and you're charging and that guy pulls back and then goes to swing and, and how many times you see the foul ball the pitchers up in the late the late swing and we see a rocket ship go over the opposite field dugout. That's what can happen with the ball in play and that's what can happen with a pitcher that can put the ball in play and a guy like Jeff Samarja. I guarantee I'd be careful about it tonight because he will pull back and he can hit. There is no way. I think Bruce Bochy and pitching coach Dave Brigetti have to let Jeff Samarja know in batting practice today. You watch Rizzo, you watch Baez. If they're crashing, you pull that back back. You're taught and you that. go ahead and swing. That's it. what you're you taught. You have to swing it. And I'm telling you, any pitcher, even if you don't handle the bat, you got to make the attempt because it's an automatic out. If I'm a defender right in front of you, you put that ball down, I'm getting out the lead runner, I can get out this runner, and I can get out the guy at first base. Greg, I don't think we're going to see that play tonight with Jeff Samarja, but if it looks like a one of those no brainer bunt situations late in the game, we're going to have to keep an eye on that one. Yeah, test out that little baby glove that Anthony Rizzo has to wear instead of I'm the keep big an first eye. baseman bed. Guys, good stuff over there in Studio 42. Still ahead, the Cubs are loaded with great pitchers, position players, and personalities. One of our best Lauren Shahadi caught up with one of theirs Dexter Fowler that 101 next. MLB tonight is presented by Evan Williams bourbon seriously good bourbon straight from Kentucky proud sponsor of the 2016 World Series. 
nothing worth having comes easy. You have to get up every morning and put in the work. Give them another. Time, effort, commitment. These are your tools. You have to understand that there are no shortcuts here. Whether you're playing in the majors or making seriously good bourbon, you know the greatest achievements in life don't just happen. They're earned. Look at all these purchases you made with your airline credit card. Hold on, you only got double miles on stuff you bought from that airline? Let me show you something better. The Capital One Venture Card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase. Not just airline purchases. Every purchase, everywhere, every day. No, really, double miles on all of them. What's in your wallet? Today, we're gonna to be comparing these two truck beds. Let's start over here with this aluminum bed. Put your toolbox up here. Whoa. That's a big hole. That is unbelievable. Now, let's check out the roll-formed steel bed of the Silverado. Same spot, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. It's truck month. Find your tag and get over 11,000 total value on this Silverado All-Star. Or now, through October 10th, get 0% financing for 72 months on all 2016 Silverado pickups. You know, it's funny, because his ex-fip is still quite good, but he is giving up the home runs. I mean, that's the problem. His exit velocity is still is pretty he bad. Right? Oh, yeah. Your software is so stable now, he really doesn't have a chance to get upset about anything. I think he just misses it. Software and application monitoring made easy. New Relic, how MLB manages performance. In LDS Game 2, tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on MLB Network. The new face of HR is surprisingly human, so give your employees a more human HR platform. Namely, payroll, benefits, talent management, and more. Our software makes it easy. It's the best system I've ever used um, for anything related to operating a business. Everyone's interested in using it, and I get all my information. You can really focus on uh, strategy and content, which is really great for an HR director. <laughs> Namely, HR for humans. Schedule your free demo today at Namely.com. You have a vision. It's behind everything you do. Even when you least expect it, it comes through. You know what you want, and we can help make it real. You need choices? We've got all kinds, including special finishes and papers. And they're all absolutely guaranteed. Because you have a vision, and we have your card. 500 started just $9.99 when you enter 500TV at Vistaprint.com. Welcome back to MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. Postseason schedule, FS1 on Sunday. Dodgers Nationals, it was postponed today because of Mother Nature. Hill, Roark, watch it. Then on TBS, they've got the American League side. Indians, Red Sox, Tribe looking for the sweep at Fenway. Blue Jays looking for the sweep at home against the Texas Rangers. Again, those games can be seen on TBS. The game you can only see here on MLB Network. The Cubs against the San Francisco Giants. The Giants drop game one, one nothing. Cueto only gave up three hits. But Lester kept them off the scoreboard. A big home run from Javi Baez. The place was going nuts. Bill Murray was shown more times than Joe Madden. Think about that. You saw Bill Murray more in the stands than you saw Joe Madden in the dugout. We'll see what will happen. 8 p.m. Eastern, Bob Costas, John Smoltz, Ken Rosenthal, they'll have the call here on MLB Network. We also have Lauren Shahadi on the ground at Wrigley Field. Lauren's always a pleasure to talk to you. She joins us live on MLB tonight. Uh, so you're on the ground. You were there yes. last night after the big one nothing win. Um, there were people tweeting out that it felt like an earthquake when Baez <laughs> hit the home run. Is the atmosphere really that crazy? Greg, it's unbelievable. I was pulling up to Wrigley Field in a taxi. I was telling the guys the other day, and as the taxi driver, driver let me out, he kind of leaned in and he whispered, welcome to heaven. I think, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> so I walked through security with some of the guys, some of the players, Ben Zobris, and you would think from the fans outside, it was 3 o'clock, they were screaming, we love you. Some of them were crying. You would think it was Justin Bieber. They were crying. The fans know what's at stake. The players know what's at stake. I was talking with Dexter Fowler a few minutes ago about Javier Baez, that huge home run, and if it's sunk in yet. I went to bed at like 2.30, and uh, 
was rolling around because my adrenaline was still high on that. So Lester was flawless. Hendricks, Arietta, Lackey, they keep coming at you. What's it like knowing no matter who has the ball, you have confidence in them? Uh, we've we've rode those horses, you know, the the whole way. So we're going to continue to do that and, and just try to play as, as good as deep as we can behind them. And tell me about the challenges Jeff Samarja presents. Um, he's a bulldog. He'll go in there and he's going to challenge you. So you just got to be ready. Everyone's excited in the clubhouse or loose. What's Joe Madden doing? Bringing in circus animals? What's next? <laughs> no, he, he. I think he's already brought in all of us. We're circus animals. <laughs> so I think that's what he's going to do. And Greg, you know Joe Madden likes to keep it light. The theme for this team this year has been try not to suck. So they don't say good luck. They say try not to suck. So this just in, this is the new shirt. It is officially try not to suck Tober, <laughs> benefiting <laughs> local charities. That Everyone is, in the stands is That is not good. your size, Lauren. That looks like a double XL. I could wear that. So yeah, let's not you lose can. it. I'll bring one home for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. As for tonight's starting pitcher, Kyle Hendricks, uh, what what a feather in his cap to start ahead of Jake Arrieta, uh, who won the Cy Young last year. It goes to show how confident they are in this right-hander. Right, Lauren? Yeah, you ask everyone about Kyle Hendricks. They always say he's quiet. He's a thinker. Everyone talks about how smart he is, that he went to Dartmouth. That's how he got the nickname The Professor. The guys even joke in the clubhouse if there's a question that's unanswered, they say, oh, ask the professor. He'll certainly know. He's really evolved as a pitcher. He's learned a lot from John Lester as well. I found out, gentlemen, if John Lester had a Cy Young Award vote, he would vote for Kyle Hendricks. And if Kyle Hendricks had a vote, he would vote for John Lester. But they compete against each other. If one of them gives up a hit, the other guy walks over to him and says, you know what? Cy Young Award winners don't give up hits. You got to clean it up. So it's fun. They push each other. That's great. And somewhere Jake Arrieta is going, uh, guys, I won it last year. And I <laughs> right? also won 18 games. And I I'm the rain. The <laughs> exactly. By the way, Madison Bumgarner was taking BP a couple of moments ago. Unbelievable home run after home run really? after home run. He put yeah, on like a Kevin Millar show of BP. <gasps> Is that good? A little bit of 1-5 in him, I think. Wow. Lauren Shahadi, thank you. Breaking news. <laughs> Madison Bumgarner putting on a show. Uh, Lauren live there at Wrigley Field. Still ahead. Uh, he came up in the bigs with the Cubs. Now he's a really, really wealthy member of the Giants. Dan Plesak breaks down tonight's Game 2 starter, Jeff Samarja, when MLB tonight comes back. Tonight, watch an exclusive NLDS Game 2 live on MLB Network as Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and the Cubs battle Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and the Giants. Tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on MLB Network. Telecast presented by GEICO. The Kids, the leader, and a legend on one last run. The Red Sox are on one of those rolls again. Modern life deserves a modern way to pay. Oh, come on! Hey, help. Dude. You can use it online and on your phone. Master passed it. XXXXL. That's sweet. Coming in for the save. Thank you. Priceless. Want a napkin? Master Pass, the secure way to pay from your bank. Don't just buy it, Master Pass it. October, the DQ5 Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world-famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ5 Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let five buck freedom ring. Turn the trips you have to take into one you'll never forget. Expedia Plus Rewards. Earn points on over one million hotels, flights, and packages.
Award season is in full swing on MLB Network. And your votes count in the second annual eSurance MLB Awards, where fans help decide who's award worthy. Visit MLB.com slash awards to cast your votes on the best players and biggest moments of the season. Unbelievable! Then fire up the debate using hashtag award worthy and catch the 2016 eSurance MLB Award Show this November on MLB Network. Welcome to Stouffer's Fit Kitchen. Prime cuts of meat, 25 grams of protein, and savory mouth-watering sides. It's the perfect balance of delicious and nutritious, making it just the right fit for you. Stouffer's Fit Kitchen Meals. This is fit. Uh, my dad gave me those shares, you know? He ran that company. I get it. But you know, I think you own too much. Gotta manage your risk. An honest opinion is how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Hey folks, the Edward Jones Chatting Cage Fan Portal gives you the chance to ask questions to some of baseball's most in-the-know personalities. Simply go to MLB.com slash Chatting Cage Portal to find answers to questions that are on the minds of fans just like you. I I'm wondering, is Laura Chiotti really telling the truth? Madison Bumgarner stepped in the cage moments ago and put on a Kevin Millar-esque show. Kev, what do you think? Yep, that's an F5. That's a pop-up to the third baseman. Okay. That's what they're watching. Let me tell you, that's on Waveland right now. The, the, only, the only advice I'd give Matt Bum is right here. Matt Bum, you're going to be a hitter? You can't fish out your homers and BP. <laughs> you cannot fish out your homers and BP. I call that tired. So, Bum, when you hit them, you just get ready for the next one. That way you can hit more because chicks do dig the long ball. He you does, too. That's, well, that's an F6. <laughs> But no, he can hit, dude. He loves hitting. He's one of those ones that just like to roll the pole, doesn't he? He's the guy that gets mad. Samarja gets mad when he gets out. These are hitters. And as a pitcher, if I was a pitcher in the big leagues, by the way, mm -hmm. I know we'll get off script for a second, but I would learn to handle the bat because you can help yourself. Like Maddox and Glavin and Smoltz, and the, they, they were just they weren't just great pitchers. They help themselves, though. You got to know yeah. how to bunt. You got to know how to drive an RBI. You know, Wainwright, what are you driving? 19, 20. He had a great RBIs? year. Yeah. He was angry in that game against Syndergaard. He called out on a 99 mile an hour fastball. He, he was low. Low. That was right. low. He looked down. He looked like, no, that's not a strike. Right. Right. Country right. boy, nah, nah. Kevin Millar, Dan Fleeshack, Greg Amsinger. We're about 30 minutes away from getting you out to the north side. Bob Costas, John Smoltz, Ken Rosenthal. We'll have the call of game two of the National League Division Series right here on MLB Network. Giants, Cubs. Uh, this has got to be an emotional performance for Jeff Samarja, right? This is the third time he's facing the Chicago Cubs, the team that drafted him. He came up uh, from the minor leagues, debuted with this team, and now he gets a chance to win a game at Wrigley Field? He does. You know, he grew up in the area. Pride and joy of Valparaiso High School in Valparaiso went in. All-American whiteout for Notre Dame, right? There were a lot of people that thought his best career choice was going to be as a receiver in the NFL. The Giants paid him dearly. There he is. There's a shot of him, number 83, for the Fighting Irish who lost today. They're 2-4. and four. Oh, really? Things are not good right now at the Golden Dome. Jeff Samarge has been one of those guys that baseball people have really liked because there's this, this thing with him that uh, not a lot of wear and tear because of his football days at Notre Dame. So you don't have to worry about all these travel teams and AAU and youth leagues. But I think Jeff Samarge is a guy. We go back to September 1st. This was his last start against the Cubs. Now he gets the loss in this game. And there were a couple of seeing eye base hits. Jason Hayward here, a little flare right over Brandon Crawford. A lot of these balls weren't really squared and centered. So you kind of take this box score and throw it out. He threw actually better, but I'm trying to take a look at Jeff Samarja. Look at when he first got called up on the left with the Cubs, and then in the center with the Oakland A's, and then with the White Sox. Three different setups. I think this is a guy that's still trying to find himself, and that's why the inconsistency. Early in the year on the left, he's going a little Johnny Cueto with the back turn. Now in September, more picking that leg up, trying to stay on a straight line. Love the stuff. Mm -hmm. It's about consistency. And what helped him get to the big leagues so quick was the fact that he was modeled to be a starting pitcher in the minor leagues. The Cubs needed some bullpen help. They called him up, and he was one of those guys, take one pitch away, fastball, use that split finger, and he took to the bullpen. Then he struggled in the bullpen, and they said, let's make this guy a starting pitcher. So I think he's still trying to find himself, and I really believe this. He hasn't really gotten to the point where – he understands what he's doing. It, it, to make it in, in a, Really? Yeah. I think he's fighting himself mechanically. He's going through a lot of changes. He needs to find something, stick with it, and trust it. 
too many changes, too many mechanical changes, and I think that leads to a lot of his inconsistency. His bank account change when he got the five-year $90 million <laughs> deal. Yeah, but you stay right there at yeah. $90 million. <laughs> He's got the swing and miss stuff, and we all know that plays yep. in the postseason. John Smoltz had swing and miss stuff. The Hall of Famer joins us now live on MLB Tonight. He'll be calling the game tonight with Bob Costas and Ken Rosenthal. Uh, John, you know, it, when you look at these two pitchers, they're both right-handed, but that's where the similarities end. Samarge is what they look like, big, tall, athletic throws mid to upper 90s. While Hendricks has the comparison to your former teammate Hall of Famer Greg Maddox. What do you think of this pitching matchup? Yeah, you couldn't have nailed it any more perfectly. I think it's uh, other than being right handed, you're seeing two totally different philosophies. For Kyle Hendricks, look, he loves pitching at home. It's Every Cub pitcher loves pitching at home, but he commands the strike zone with his sinker and changeup. He'll throw his changeup to both sides of the plate, and it doesn't matter if it's a right hander or a left hander. You look at all his statistics, you cannot find a bad one. That's how dominant he's been. On the other side, for Samarja, I think it's going to come down, even though he's a power pitcher, it's going to come down to the use of his curveball. You have to make these Cub hitters respect a secondary pitch. Otherwise, if they're reduced to hitting fastballs, even with the wind blowing in, it's going to be a long night for Samarja. So as the Giants have relied heavily on their starting pitching, look for him to at least go six or seven to give them a chance to get a split. And you know if they get a split, you know who's waiting in San Francisco, Mr. Bumgarner. Yeah, so far so good, John, in terms of how much Bruce Bochy's had to use that bullpen, which struggled in the second half of the season. Not at all. A uh, Bumgarner was great in the wild card game. Johnny Cueto went the distance in game one last night. Do you think tonight the bullpen of the Giants will loom large in game two? They have to. I, I don't think unless Samarja just is throwing a gem. They're they're fresh and rested. Even if they haven't been locked down and great the last two weeks, they haven't been used much. So you're going to see a bullpen that's going to have to be a part of the San Francisco's Giants victory. They just don't find ways to blow people out for the most part do the Giants so they have to win close games they have to rely on mix and match in their bullpen and who better to do it than Bruce Bochy this is a classic series I think every game is going to be this way and it's going to be the team that executes the best nail biter to come in game two John Smoltz joins us live on MLB tonight to be part of the broadcast our showcase game Giants Cubs game two John thank you very much still ahead on MLB tonight Kevin Moore likes to throw out comps this is going to be a doozy which player on the Giants or Cubs reminds him of the straw man, Daryl Strawberry? Find out next. Is that iced tea? Nope, it's lemonade. Is that iced tea? Lemonade. Iced tea. What's with these people, man? Lemonade. Read the sign. Lemonade. Read it. Okay. Delicious. Iced tea at a lemonade stand? <laughs> surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Marin saved by switching to Geico. No iced tea. It's lemonade, man. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Back at the Ownership Classic, this is a crucial moment. He's really in the weeds with his broker's recommendations. What are they based on? How much do they truly cost? Oh, would you look at that? He's calling his broker, Bob. Hello, Peter. Talk about ownership. This man has the heart of a lion, and the crowd responds. Are you asking enough questions about the way your wealth is managed? Wealth Management at Charles Schwab. Have you ever noticed how some people in life seem to get away with everything? We live our lives from an elevated perspective. You're late. Time's a relative concept. Well, I see you have mastered the laws of gravity. We are the masters of time and space. And we all drive Jaguars. Ha, ha, ha. The all-new Jaguar F-Pace. For great offers, visit your local Jaguar retailer today. Stop. With that box, you'll be the first to win PlayStation VR. Player one. Soon it spreads like wildfire. Humanity becomes so plugged in, we never see them coming. That's why I was sent back to stop you. Oh, hey, I won. Right. The future of gaming starts at Taco Bell. Grab any $5 box and you can be one of the first to win PlayStation VR. 
Well, this here is a load-bearing wall. We'll go ahead and rip that out. It's gonna yeah. cause a lot of problems. Mm. Totally unnecessary, and it triples the budget. Wouldn't it be great if everyone said what they meant? The City Double Cash Card does. Earn 1% cash back when you buy, and 1% as you pay. Double means double. With the blast motion sensor, I feel like that's the quickest way you can get information. That's the quickest way you can make adjustments. If the technology is there to help you, we gotta take it. Tonight, watch an exclusive NLDS Game 2 live on MLB Network as Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and the Cubs battle Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and the Giants. Tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on MLB Network. Telecast presented by GEICO. MLB Tonight brings you closer to the postseason. My goodness! With two division series games in October, live on MLB Network, or stream live on the At Bat app, the analyst of MLB Tonight bringing you closer to the game. Welcome back to MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. Oh, the north side of Chicago, oh, Wrigleyville. Oh, oh, oh. Dan, what is this place really like? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Under 21, it's a good place to watch baseball. Over 21, it's the greatest place in the world because <laughs> by the third inning, it's double vision. <laughs> it's go, Cubs, go. Hey, everybody. I'm really jealous. Oh, I don't want to be in sick caucus, New Jersey, right now. Oh. Uh, that is where the party is tonight, getting set for game two of the National League Division Series. Giants and Samarja against Hendricks and the Cubs. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll get you out there in just a few minutes. Bob Costas, John Smoltz, Ken Rosenthal have the call. Now, we went to the break on MLB tonight saying, that Kevin Millar likes to throw out comps, right? Comp this guy. is a gaudy comparison because growing up in the 80s watching Daryl Strawberry play, he was the baddest dude in the game on the National League side. So who among the Giants and Cubs remind you of the straw man? Every time I see Brandon Belt get up to the plate, that power that he has reminds me of Daryl Strawberry. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? Let me show you what I'm talking about right here. Take me to the tape, please. Here we go. Brandon Belt, University of Texas. Big old nickname's Giraffe, but you know what? There's the Texas flag, and he likes Longhorns. That's right, those are Longhorns. Very friendly, though. You can feed them right over your hand. They're awesome. I've done it before. I'm a fake cowboy, but not Brandon. Here he is right here, sitting on his little ranch. He's <laughs> going to be rich enough to have a ranch. That's right, just on his extension. But check out his pop. It's almost like he doesn't finish swinging. Here it sneaks out of course field. You're going, okay, here we go. This is Oppo at home. We all know how big Pac Bell is. Or AT&T, sorry. And then listen, this is dead center at AT&T. But he's got that easy pop. The hands go inside the ball, keeps that ball fair, Philly. And guess what, straw man? Crenshaw, California. Here he is. Woo-woo! If you didn't have his 1985 Don Russ card, you weren't collecting baseball oh, cards I got back it. then. I got it. That's right, and Don Manley, by the way. But you can see Straw with the double, the double hand, two-hand swing. You never saw that. It's usually that one-handed sweet swinging. Straw man, but when I see these two, well, I see Brandon Bell. Let's just say that it just got me thinking about that swing and that power and that easy power foul pole to foul pole, which you can't teach. That's the thing. When you got a guy that home run here, and 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 Brandon, someday you're going to see 35 to 40. Really, in that, in so. that thing. No doubt in my mind. You saw 17 this year. He led the Giants in home runs. We saw him get pinch hit last night from Bochy, and you're like, whoa, why would you pinch hit that? I don't know why, because you're one swing away from tying the game. I know lefty and lefty, but Chapman's 95% fastballs. Brandon Bell's going to hit 35 to 40 home runs once he learns how to hit homers. Mm. You, you know, he's got the pop. You saw that easy pop. You can't teach that. Once he learns how to hit homers, then I'd start practicing hit homers in BP. Because I always tell boys, don't worry about getting inside out. Hit homers in BP, because if you don't practice hitting them, how do you know how to hit them? Right. And in case you're, That's wondering, right. in case you're wondering how things Yeehaw. work behind the curtain here, if Belt were to hit a home run tonight, based on that breakdown from Kevin Millar, we would all celebrate and give you a high five. By the way, Longhorns, you can feed them out of your hand. They eat. Really? They're softer than a dog. They're awesome. You got to hold, but you got to be careful because really? the I'm horns, if they get a fly on them and they shake, yeah. that horn will get you. But just get up there. I'm telling you, their hands, they eat nice. They're that's right. Fake cowboy here well, now. Well, listen, Kyle Hendricks wants to keep the real cowboy, Brandon Belt, okay. away from taking him yard tonight. Uh, we'll talk much more about this matchup, Cubs Giants. I'm still not buying it. It's got to be spitty <laughs> to feed this thing. No. Look at the nostrils. Easy breezy, I promise you. Very friendly. But don't let that horn get anywhere near your no. face. No. We're back into this.
You can't always protect her. Make sure her tires will. The Michelin Premier Tire with Evergrip technology. Even when half worn, it's still safe. Safe when new, safe when worn. If you have a typical airline credit card, you only earn double miles when you buy stuff from that airline. Wait, is this where you typically shop? You should be getting double miles on every purchase. Switch to the Capital One Venture Card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, everywhere, every day. Not just airline purchases. Seriously, double miles, everywhere. What's in your wallet? Hey man, why aren't you streaming my game? Uh, hey Bryce, I can't. Yeah, I've got Verizon and I've already reached my data limit. You know this is the postseason, right? Yeah, I... You could be missing a classic. You're killing me, man, but look, more data would cost me a fortune. What if I just hit a walk-off bomb? Nah, you didn't. Did you? Why pay more for data limits? Introducing T-Mobile One, unlimited data for everyone. Get four lines, just 35 bucks a month. Welcome to Unlimited Baseball. Today we're going to be comparing the roll form steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Awesome. Yeah. First, let's check out the aluminum bed of this truck. Wow. Holy moly. Full on crack here. Now let's check out the steel bed of the Silverado. I'd expect more dents. No holes. It's truck month. Find your tag and get over 11,000 total value on this Silverado All-Star. Or now through October 10th, get 0% financing for 72 months on all 2016 Silverado pickups. In LTS Game 2, tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on MLB Network. America, all through October, the DQ5 Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world-famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ5 Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let 5 Buck Freedom ring. So, the General can insure almost any car and any driver? We sure can. You know, I was insured by the General when I was younger. Well, we provided low-cost auto insurance for more than 50 years. Hey, I'm not that old. <laughs> At the General, monthly payments are low with immediate online proof of insurance. Get your anonymous online quote with low payments and ride with the General. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time. America, all through October, the DQ5 Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world-famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ5 Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let 5 Buck Freedom ring. Welcome back to MLB Tonight. Jeff Samarja getting closer to uh, pitching this important game, too, for the San Francisco Giants. This club was shut out in game one. They came close. The wind blew back. Buster Posey's shot off a roll as Chapman. We are minutes away. We'll get you out to Bob Costas and John Smoltz in the booth on the north side in just minutes here on MLB Network. It's Greg Amsinger, Dan Plesak, and yeah. Kevin Millar. I asked John Smoltz this question. You know, Bruce Bochy knows that his bullpen has not given him the best performance in 2016. After not having to use his bullpen in the wild card game thanks to Mad Bum and thanks to Johnny Cueto who didn't use a single reliever last night is this the night that the bullpen looms large for the Giants I think it does I think when you think of the Giants bullpen how bad it was in August and September it was the ninth inning getting the ball to the bridging that gap was okay Sergio Romo brought some calm the last two weeks he was their go-to guy this was the guy that closed out the World Series for them not that long ago so they feel good about the ninth inning with Romo and I think getting to the and I think that's not the problem. The last three outs had been a problem. But even Romo, Kev, isn't that more than three out super reliever that we know the Cubs have in Chapman, that the Orioles decided not to use in Britain, that the Blue Jays have in Osuna. They don't have that guy that they can lean on to give them more than three outs. Yeah, but this is where Bruce Bochy is one of the greatest in this game at handling his bullpen. He doesn't have the big salary guys that we can bring in the six right. You know, they have that massive power. Strickland's got the power, but at times the location's been off. So, but Sergio Romo can get more than three outs. He can go in and get five outs. He can go in and get four outs. He's got a great slide. Now, his velocity is not the one that goes, whoa, but his slider is like a, like a cue ball in a pool table, right? You can't see any spin. Zero. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, I'm trying to think of when it last time I played. Yeah, don't worry about it. So let's just uh, do this. As a hitter, you got to see a spin. That slider, we see the dot. Sergio Ramos comes out like a fastball every time, even though you know he throws it 80% of the time, and you still think that's why you see a lot of out front swings. So, out front swings. <laughs> so, my point being is that Sergio Romo, and he's got that moxie. Now, that boy's been there a long time. He got out there, he's not afraid of any situation. That goes a long way also. Okay, as for tonight's game, who do you think has the most pressure on their right arm? Is it Jeff Samarja? Because you don't want to go down 0-2. Or is it Hendricks, Kev? Because if the Cubs lose this game, they know Madison Bumgarner, arguably the best postseason pitcher ever, waits for them in Game 3 in San Francisco. Yeah, I, I really don't think uh, it's a different kind of pressure. I think there's an excitement with Hendricks. So you can say the excitement of the pressure being this number two star for the Cubs, you know, on this stage and the year that he's had, that's that's probably the, the I'd say more, uh, how do I say the word? The most pressure, feeling the most pressure, that fun pressure, right? Uh -huh. right? Catch my drift, Dan. Uh, so I don't, I, and I think Samar just just got that bulldog. He's a wide receiver mentality. He's played in front of millions on NBC. So this this isn't pressure for him. He's already rich and he's strong and he's big. Catch okay, my drift. I got so you. Kyle, in my opinion, is feeling more. We'll use that word pressure, fun pressure. I think if you're the Cubs, if they can win this game, then I, this sounds crazy, but I don't think they fear big bad mad bum as much in game three if they're up 2-0 going into game three that's a lot of pressure on Bumgarner and I think the Cubs feel like hey that's not one game is going to turn that series back around I think this is a big game this is a must win game for the Cubs for the Cubs I think for the Cubs oh they don't want to go to My San area. Fran they don't want to go to San Fran 1-1 to face Mad Bum. Oh, pressure on the Cubs. Pressure on our guys. Kevin Millar and Dan Plesek. Did you look at last night's hero, Javi Baez? Who do they think will win game two tonight? Predictions next. MLB Tonight is presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. Seriously good bourbon straight from Kentucky. Proud sponsor of the 2016 World Series. If time is a measure of how good something is, then Evan Williams Bourbon has something really good going. Seriously good. Since 1783, Evan Williams has proven one thing, that a good bourbon is a smooth bourbon. Many years and many barrels later, people are still reaching for the smoothness of Evan Williams. That means something, doesn't it? Evan Williams, seriously good bourbon. And for more of a good thing, try the smooth flavor of Evan Williams honey. We're back, and she's found herself in the broker's office reviewing quarterly returns. How's she doing, Rich? She's got it all under control. Wait, that's it? But, Bob, she hasn't asked about those fees. Oh, you know, one last thing. How do your fees work? Oh, what a recovery. This one's not over, folks. She's back in the driver's seat. Are you asking enough questions about the way your wealth is managed? Wealth Management at Charles Schwab. trips you have to take into one you'll never forget. Expedia Plus Rewards. Earn points on over one million hotels, flights, and packages. America, all through October, the DQ5 Buck Lunch is now available all day long. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world-famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ5 Buck Lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let five buck freedom ring. Modern life deserves a modern way to pay. Hey, help. Dude. You can use it online and on your phone. Master passed it. XXXXL. That's sweet. Coming in for the save. Thank you. Priceless. Want a napkin? Master Pass. The secure way to pay from your bank. Don't just buy it. Master Pass it. Tonight, watch an exclusive NLDS showdown live on MLB Network.
Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and the NL Central champion Chicago Cubs continue their quest for the first championship in over a century as they battle Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and the wildcard winning Giants. NLDS Game 2, tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on MLB Network or streamed live on MLBnetwork.com and the at Bat app. Telecast presented by GEICO. We are minutes away from Game 2 of the National League Division Series. Giants against the Cubs. Wrigley, a packed house tonight. Earlier we had Lawrence Shahadi reporting live, talking about how the atmosphere was electric. And as you can see here, a lot of Cub fans watching this broadcast. 72% of you think the Cubs will reign supreme and take a commanding 2-0 series lead against the San Francisco Giants before we send it out to the north side. Uh, Kev, we got about a minute. Who do you believe? We'll take game two, Giants, Cubs. I'm going to go against the grain. Samar just steps up. Giants bats hit the uh, maybe the Cy Young guy, Hendricks, and I think they take this series 1-1 into San Fran. Arietta Bumgarner. I think the Cubs needed that game. They were off five days. They needed that Friday game to get their time and to get going. I think they knocked Samarja out by the sixth inning. Woo! Cubs go up 2-0. The big blue train continues to roll. Does Javi Baez go yard again? Because kind of, if there, anyone's going to hit a home run, I want to watch that dude hit a home run. Why do I like swing. watching him hit a home run? Because he's got an unbelievable swing. He's got a golf swing in the baseball. Show us. Show yeah. us. Before we say goodbye, what is the... Boom! Right? I mean, oh, but he's got power. It's homers. <laughs> he's the X Factor, by the way, defensively. Yeah. For Kev, uh, Dan, my name's Greg. That does it for MLB tonight. Reminder, join us after the game for all the highlights and analysis. For now, let's head to Chicago for our MLB Network Showcase. It's the Giants versus the Cubs. Bob Costas, take it away. Greg, it is a beautiful October night on Chicago's north side. As game time approaches, temperature is 57 degrees, and it was a beautiful start to this postseason for their club last night. A 1-0 thriller against the Giants to take the 1-0 lead in the best of five division series. This telecast is presented by Geico on MLB Network, the Cubs, and the Giants from Wrigley Field. With Hall of Famer John Spoltz, I'm Bob Costas, the pitching pairing. Kyle Hendricks, the ERA leader in the majors among starting pitchers, Cy Young Award candidate against Jeff Samarja of the Giants, the former Cub. But before we look ahead, let's look back to last night. Javier Baez's homer wins it in the bottom of the eighth, one to nothing, the great pitcher's duel between Lester and Cueto. But when a game is that close, there are always little moments you can look back on and say, what if? Yeah, well, when you're thinking about attacking the Cubs, how do you beat the Cubs? They have so many ways to beat you, and many people think you've got to do it on the base pass. And with the pitchers not being able to hold the runners and the stolen bases, that's what the Giants were looking to take advantage of. And in the first inning, they get the leadoff hitter on, and right away, David Ross and John Lester said, no, thank you, that's not going to happen here. And then earlier in the third inning, they get the leadoff runner on, and they pitch out and throw out. And really, in the first three innings, when the leadoff hitter gets on in the postseason, that's a lot of stress. They eliminated the stress. They did the little things to make it not a stressful situation for John Lester, and they went on to win that game. Tough enough to have to face the likes of Lester and Cueto, but last night was not a hitter's night. Stiff wind. The ball that Baez hit in the eighth inning, all of us thought it was bound for Waveland. Apparently, it took something close to a bazooka to get one out of here last night because it barely cleared the ivy and made it into the basket, but that was good enough. Then, top of the ninth, two out, nobody on. Buster Posey with a bid to tie the game, and it's off the ivy on a different night. It would have been into the seats to tie it. He was stranded at second base. The Giants lose it. One to nothing. And as we go now to Ken Rosenthal, even though they were facing John Lester, no disgrace, even though they had to face Noah Syndergaard earlier at City Field, it all highlights a problem that has been ongoing for the Giants. They can't score. Right, Bob. It's the offense right now that is the issue. Two postseason games, 18 innings, and they've only scored in one of them. You mentioned the names Syndergaard, Lester, and it doesn't get any easier tonight against the National League ERA champ Kyle Hendricks. Now the Giants have their left handed hitters back in the lineup Denard Span Joe Panic and as well Connor Gillespie again in place of Eduardo Nunez who remains day to day with that tricky hamstring that he has. Now Nunez pinch hit in the ninth inning last night we saw he didn't run hard on that ground ball in a second. He said that he was instructed to run at only 70 percent. He took four hard steps and then he heard the dugout yelling slow down slow down. So that's what he did. 
And he was really frustrated still talking about that today, saying that he could have beaten that ball easily. And if he had, who knows what might have happened. Buster Posey followed with a double. A pinch runner might have scored from first base. Now, Nunez is still available to face Chapman tonight if necessary. They like his bat speed against Chapman's fastball. But ideally, the Giants want to stay away from Chapman, get the lead. The problem is you keep facing pitchers with two ERAs, and it's not easy. As Brandon Belt said, that's the problem with playing the Cubs. It sure is. Last night, they faced Lester, second best ERA in the majors among starting pitchers. Tonight, it's Hendricks, who had the best ERA of any starting pitcher in the major leagues. He faces the former Cub, Jeff Samarja. Well, the similarities stop with they're both right handed. And then huh. after that, it's total opposites. Samarja is going to rely on a power fastball sinking down in his zone along with his curveball split and slider. Hendricks of course miles per hour will not be an issue. It's sinkers and change up this series all about the depth of the starting pitchers on both teams and really could come down to who delivers the most innings could go on to the next series. Well the atmosphere here at Wrigley Field is obviously terrific. Jeff Samarja was booed when he walked out onto the field both last night during introductions and tonight as he went down to the bullpen to warm up. He spent a good portion of his career here as a Cub before bouncing briefly to Oakland then the White Sox and then signed the long term deal with the Giants. So he gets the call tonight trying to even the series game three Monday at at and Park. What a matchup Arietta against Bumgarner time now for our national anthem. At this time, please remain standing and join John Vincent as he honors America with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in a gate proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled I've been thinking, this might be the one thing in the world you pull apart to come together. New Papa John Cinnamon Pull-Aparts covered with cinnamon crumble and sweet cream cheese icing. Try our new cinnamon pull-aparts for just six bucks. Hey. Papa John's. Seven ingredients. Wonder what they are. Corrosion inhibitor. Solvent for Demulsifier. Fuel detergent number one. Fuel detergent number two. Anti-adhesion compound. And marker molecules. Get better gas mileage with Synergy. Exxon and Mobil. Energy lives here. Strikeouts for Kershaw. Corey's 
Seager. Gonzalez has put the Dodgers in front. Could you pass the sugar? <laughs> Piece of cake. Nice flowers, Move. You can't rewrite history. <laughs> but every October, new history is made. Catch up with the postseason on MLB Network. Should have had that. Yeah, I've been there. MLB Tonight brings you closer to the postseason. Oh, my goodness! You can't script this stuff. Closer to the big plays. I really want to take a closer look at that Let's one. Go.